Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the C programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about type def. Now you've probably seen type def if you've been following this series. I think I've talked about it a little bit with structs, but I wanted to kind of summarize for the use cases. This is something that's come up frequently and I think it'd be nice just to have a review video and see how I use it and some thoughts about naming convention. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just create a brand new file here, main.c here, and let's just go ahead and set up a program. And let's just go ahead and include the basic standard input header here and make sure that we can compile and run this program. Of course, I'm going to try to do my best to compile with warnings uh, and treat warnings as errors here in our programs. So when talking about type def, what I really need to do here is bring in my whiteboard here for just a moment here and talk about what type def is here. And again, you've probably seen this show up a few times here. Uh, if I write it just a little bit neater here, because it is a keyword in the C programming language. So the main idea with it is that we're able to create an alias for a type. And again, why might we want to do this? Because we do have some other tools here. And I'm going to give the general idea where possible and to say that type def is greater than pound define for this specific task here, where we want to create an alias for a type. So again, let me go ahead and explain with a few examples here. So what we've been previously able to do and it's maybe seen is we can do things like define pi 3.1415, something like that. And then if I go ahead and just type out int uh, some value equals pi, for instance, let's just go ahead and uh, compile this and let's just go ahead and print it out as well. Uh, value, and I'll put an end line here. And let's go ahead and compile this and we'll go ahead and run this program. We'll see that it prints out uh, three here for the substitution. And uh, in this case, I'm actually a little bit surprised here, but we didn't get a uh, error here because this define here, well, it's just doing a textual substitution and then it's converted into a uh, integer value here. So it's truncated. So let's just go ahead and make it a float here and then properly uh, do the format specifier as well. And then now we can see that this prints out our value here doing the textual substitution. And that's really the key here when we're using define here. So allow me to run this program. And instead of actually compiling it, I'm just going to pass in dash E and hit enter here. And what this is going to do is it's not going to compile the program, but it's just going to run through the preprocessor, which is part of the compilation setup here. Now, I've got some videos if you want to go ahead and check my uh, resources on YouTube for how to understand compilation. But what we can immediately see here is there's no define in our code here for main.c. All the stuff that's above here on the right side is coming in from standard IO, which is effectively pasted in our program. So again, define is just a textual replacement. It copy and paste anywhere where it finds this token or this string, capital P, capital I, with this value here. So that allows us to do things at compile time that might be interesting. But oftentimes we want a sort of uh, check when it comes to using types. So that's what a type definition is. So again, allow me to uh, write out just a little bit more on type def and how we use it and how it differs from define. And what we do is we take in a existing uh, name or a type, and then we create the alias name here, okay, between the angled brackets here. Okay, so I've got two components here. And again, why we like this is because it's part of the actual type system. So let's just go ahead and look at a few different examples here uh, for this program, playing around with type def and summarizing some of the use cases that we've seen. So again, one of the things that we can do here is just say type def unsigned int and maybe rename it to uint for unsigned int, okay? Uh, let's just go ahead and play around with some values here. So I might now wanna say uint, uh, value two equals you know 56, something like that here. Uh, and I should be able to, uh, first, let's just check if I can compile this here. Uh, it says unused variable, so it is giving me a warning. So let's just go ahead and print it off here. 
So now we can see our warnings are actually uh, kicking into effect here, which is good. Uh, and let's actually print this out. This is an unsigned value. Uh, I can just use the integer format specifier here, uh, just so it's actually used. And there we go. And we can actually run it here. Let's run the same thing here with the uh, preprocessor just to see how it works here. And we can see we actually have this type definition. So it is part of the compiled code here. Okay, so this is nice here. And again, this is the right tool to use. Uh, and on very rare occasion, I've seen and why I reviewed uh, define here, folks might try stuff like this where they might say, well, I want to define uh, char and now treat that as an int here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, compile this uh, program. It does compile. Uh, and let's go ahead and in our program, put some char here uh, and just set it, I don't know, to A, something like that here. So again, uh, I get an unused variable here. So let's just go ahead and print it off here. Uh, I'm going to put an A. I think it's a uh, character. So I'm going to put in percent %C. And we'll go ahead and print that off here. And, well, this program might work here, but let's actually run it through the preprocessor. And we can see that we are doing this substitution here. We're now saying treat all of our characters as ints. Now, while this is a niche trick here, all of a sudden we have, unfortunately, broken all of our sort of type checking. We're effectively passing through that uh, system here in a way, or otherwise just maybe getting weird behaviors, okay? Because we're just doing this substitution. So this would be a very wrong use case of define, okay? Uh, a very wrong way to use define. And I have seen this for folks who do this uh, as a shortcut, um, and I wouldn't recommend it, right? You want to instead use a type definition here, which is defining some uh, existing value and creating an alias for it. In that way, if I need to change this type here, anywhere I have uh, unsigned int, for instance, Maybe I could change it to unsigned long if I know I have larger values or something. And that's a little bit better here, okay? So that's the idea here. Uh, anyways, with how we use unsigned int. And it's important to realize that I'm not inventing a new type here. I'm simply just using the existing type here and defining an alias for it. Okay, so why would that be useful for us? Oftentimes it's because it could be a little bit more descriptive Sometimes you might want to substitute the type. So for example, uint is pretty clear what it is, but let's just say I need a system where I just have numbers or some sort of values. And again, maybe that's dependent on some data that I'm reading in. So again, this is the, the power that I get with this system where I have that luxury to change things around as needed, okay? I'm gonna keep it as unsigned uh, int for now, just for the purpose of this. Um, but let's go ahead and proceed and think about some uh, times where this might be useful. Now, sometimes we might want to write more uh, sort of descriptive code. So let's go ahead and take this example here, uh, where oftentimes folks might have in star some pointer value, uh, something like this here. Okay, I'm just going to have it point to null for now. Uh, and let's include uh, standard lib.h, I believe, for null. Um, but something that I like that's a little bit more descriptive in the code here is if I can do something like, say, take an int star and just say int pointer, okay? And that is my type here. So I'll compile it uh, first just to show that it indeed, um, well, again, it's going to be an unused variable here. Uh, so it's really doing well with the uh, checks here. Uh, let's just do percent %p and put in our pointer, uh, something like that. All right, so there we go. Uh, and I could run this and I'll print out uh, nil here, which is nice. Um, but, you know, sometimes with this code, if our codes, one thing we can do as programmers to write nice code is make it a little bit more self-descriptive. For instance, uh, you know, it's evident to see that this is part of the type, but again, just to be really intentional, I could write int pointer like this, okay? Uh, and I think that's just a little bit nicer code to have these sort of type definitions here. They're already defined. I can quickly look them up to see the signature here. This type itself is probably pretty trivial, but um, you know this might be something I want to do. In fact, I'll give you a demonstration with a more common uh, example that we do. 
when we have something like a struct. So for instance, if I create a struct like this student, and let's just give ourselves some fields in this struct, uh, maybe their ID and their grade. Whenever I create a structure here, so student here, for instance, uh, and let's just call it student Mike, and set some of the fields, uh, Mike ID equals five, Mike grade equals A, of course. Uh, now let's actually see if it complains at me uh, for not using this struct. Yes, it will. Um, <laughs> I need the, the semicolon here. Uh, so compilers did a pretty good job telling us uh, that things weren't work, working. Um, but I do need to type out the word struct before uh, this here, this uh, student here, because this is part of it. This is telling me what the actual data type is, struct student here. Okay, And we can actually print off uh, Mike here. Uh, and let's go ahead and put in uh, my ID and my uh, grade, which is just a character, uh, Mike.ID and Mike.grade. Okay, uh, so there we go here. And I'll go ahead and run this. Okay, so where type def comes into use is if I go ahead and say, let's just define a new type here for struct student, and then let's just go ahead and call it something like student uh, t here. Okay, so now I can actually uh, instead here come down and create this student here by just saying student t mike. Okay and I can get rid of the struct keyword. And this makes things a little bit nice when you're passing types in through a function, for instance. Uh, it's just a little bit shorter and again, a clear definition. Now, let me give something uh, of note of here, and I'm certainly guilty of this by habit here, where I like to name my custom types underscore T. Now that convention is actually something that's part of the uh, I think it might be part of the C standard, but it's what the C types use. So you shouldn't really use underscore T. Uh, that's a bad habit I've acquired. Uh, so typing out type is probably a little bit better, although IDEs might still uh, search for things that end with underscore T and then, you know, anything after. So come up with some sort of naming convention. Um, I think I'm fine with um, underscore type for now. That's a little bit better here. Uh, for our own types. That tells me that I made it. Um, what's even better is if this type is part of your file. Now, my file is actually called main. You could actually sort of give it a module. Uh, and I'm just going to call this students or something underscore student. That might be a little bit better. Uh, it might be a little bit more verbose, but this might be a way to sort of have namespaces if you've seen that in other languages. Um, let me actually just leave it as underscore type. I think that's uh, good enough for now. Um, or you could call it like UDT for user defined type or something like that. Um, just come up with some sort of convention. I'm going to try my best in this series to get away from underscore T. That's just a bad habit I've acquired <laughs> for my custom types. Uh, but anyways, we can see that this works with our uh, structs here, which is really nice. Now, some other things that we can do here is also make our life just a little bit easier when we're working with things like function pointers. On day eight of this series, you saw that we learned about function pointers, or at least got our introduction to them. And uh, sometimes it might be useful to, uh, for our uh, type defs, take advantage of function pointers. So I could do a type def, for instance, here, and do something like void star. And again, I like to prefix my function pointers usually with pfn for pointer to function, fn being function, and p. Uh, for a uh, pointer, and then maybe some of the arguments, float and a float, for instance. So now I have this type definition, uh, type definition for things that are, uh, or I should say, uh, for pointers uh, that look at uh, functions of this signature here, which would be something like void, you know, add, float A, float B, or something like that here. Okay, and let's actually write that function here very quickly. Uh, void, uh, I don't know, uh, add or something, float A, float B. And actually, this isn't a really great uh, function here because we probably want a return value. So let's just make this return a float here. Uh, but you can see how that works here. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do in my code is let's go ahead and go down here just a little bit lower here and let's just go ahead and create pfn equals uh add okay 
uh, that's the type here. Uh, I'm just going to call this my operation. Okay. Uh, function pointer to some operation that has this signature here, PFN. Okay. And again, with my naming convention, I might use something like, um, you know, FF to indicate that there is a float here and a float. That's sort of like the C++ name mangling for those of you folks that I'm just going to leave it as PFN for now. Uh, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and call this function here operation and pass in uh, 7.2 and 5.9 and let's go ahead and print out that value so that we actually use it uh, uh, let's say operation equals something like this and let's go ahead and run our program now and we can see that it computes that value properly Okay, do a little bit of math here, 7.2 plus 5.9, yes, 13.1 here. Okay, so this is another use case of type def where you can uh, define things. Now, the last thing I'll show you is the other um, use case for uh, structs here. Um, a lot of times folks won't do these on two different lines here. Um, and that's probably... Um, actually, I need to think about that a little bit, because usually what I would do is probably put this in a separate header file, this type definition. So let me go ahead and put this. Uh, this would live in its own header file, this sort of type definition. Um, just so you know what type you have available, uh, you know, this would be in the .c file somewhere. Uh, but oftentimes what you'll see folks do is they'll just put the type def here in front of this uh, struct here. Uh, and that also works uh, fine here. Okay, and then what you do here is, well, after I've defined uh, the type here, I would just come and say student type after. Okay, uh, so let's get rid of this one so we don't have duplicates. I'll go ahead and compile it so you can see that's the same thing. Uh, but if it's useful, again, uh, this is my uh, type that I'm sort of defining what I've highlighted here. Here, let me do it in Vim so it doesn't get uh, too wild. Uh, that's the type that's been created, right? Something that's already existing. And this is the name for it. Okay, so that circles us back to exactly what we did here. What I've got highlighted in the code is the existing name, that struct student. And then this is the alias name here. Okay, so that's just a little bit. This is a specific lesson on type def and type definitions. Uh, it's fun to play around with. And again, the overall result is it's stronger than something like define because we're utilizing the type system and it's using it in the right way, right? Uh, Define is used for textual replacement. Type def is used for creating aliases. Okay, and oftentimes this can be a good type of alias to uh, create. It's often easy to see in a debugger what these actual types are as well. Uh, so make sure you check out my lessons on debugging <laughs> for that, um, and uh, I can link to that at the end here in a moment here. Now I will mention too before proceeding, there are something known as fixed width types. So typically I'm not using u int here. Uh, but there are some of these already defined in C. Someone has thought about these, okay? And another great way to just learn about or see use cases of type defs and when they might be appropriate is to look at some other maybe open source projects. Maybe you'll find a game or something. Uh, and just kind of read through the code and see how folks use these things. All right, folks, so with that said, I'll go ahead and just point you again to this uh, website here, my website, courses.mshot.io. If you want to track your progress on the C series here, you can follow along with those videos here uh, just to make sure that you have seen, for instance, day eight on function pointers. I've got my lessons on debugging here above if you want, but again, to sign up for this and track your progress is free. All right, folks, and I hope you enjoyed that lesson learning about type def. It's been a requested video for quite some time, so thank you to my subscribers, viewers, and members for mentioning that, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next videos.